It's just a really weird look because he's missing legs. We have deadlines. We have other videos that we got to work on sooner than later. And this video has already taken up more time than a typical video because it's, it's become a passion project. Here's the original footage. Camera doesn't move. It's locked off. Now I've got to overlay the clean plate, which is the background without any people in it. Putting a rough blanket over the body. But now his hands and his belt is all fuzzy. So from there, you now mask back in his hands and a more sharp mask around his belt floating above the ground thanks to the magic of movies. This brings us to a point where we can now drop in the render. Poof! Now they're there. That whole process is called painting out. When you ever hear someone say, I'm gonna paint that out, that's what they mean. They're gonna put the clean plate back on top of that and make it so that it never existed to begin with. Like Clint's lower half of his body here. But boy, getting getting this duck wheel thing to, to work and render and all that was a story all on its own. So I've got a few people help me today, one of which was Gabe who was pretty solid at After Effects and was helping me. But we also have a surprise guest today. Hey, Jordan. You're not surprised, Gabe? No. Jordan, Mr. Rad Radish himself, was in town. Hey, can I like help with something? I was like, yes, I need your help right now. This is all true. We're using Nico's car and he requested that we replace his license plate. This is a perfect opportunity to throw in an Easter egg from Darkwing Duck. You basically did everything I, I was gonna try to do here without any help or assistance. Mocha. I made a call to action a couple weeks ago trying to ask for help. I've gotten like 160 emails from people like offering their help so that was extremely overwhelming choosing who to work with but this is the guy I'm working with on the video. I wasn't expecting you to literally stop after only one step. Never, I almost never use any sort of like transitions because they usually just kind of come across as tech. There's a classic movie called Ocean's Eleven. It's really good. It's about people putting out fires in Brazil. They walk into this elevator here. They're using this as a classic scene transition. The whole reason why I wanted to talk about it is because I, I thought it was more interesting than just a linear wipe from either side. But it turns out it's just a linear wipe from either side. What's interesting is that it's the, the wipe isn't with the doors. And I feel like that would be the obvious first thing is that it would go with the doors like as the doors are closing. I think the linear wipe is with the doors. That makes... I feel like logically that makes sense. I don't know if creatively that's a good idea at all. This is not centered. Why, why is it all janky? I mean, look where the line locks. It it's right over Ruben here. Yeah, the, where you're supposed to look. I wonder if that's why they did it. You know what's even cooler? What George Clooney's doing with his hands? He's pointing it right where they're gonna be sitting in the next scene. He vignetted it naturally with trees and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the, the lines of the palm trees dead center, four factors to focus your attention right there. This is something that you will probably not notice when watching the movie, but that's the point. You're not supposed to notice this thing. It's supposed to subtly influence how you're absorbing the movie. That's cool. I want to see more of that in movies. You want to know another fun fact? In the, the transition shot that you pointed out, the doors close between them. Okay. And now we flip the 180. What's between them? Oh, you're right! <laughs> you're right! So it's like... <laughs> There's some interesting camera movement in this scene too at the end of it. They're talking, he's still talking between them, and then the camera does an actual push in as he's like, you're crazy. Who do you have in mind? And it's Push right in, him. and now it's exclusively him, yeah. Oh, they actually, they finished that scene with a normal linear white. It's Peter. Yeah. Did you learn this in college? Oh, yeah. I went all the way. You, you did? He's smarter than you. Good. Carmichael. Gotta get back to doing some VFX for Gizmo Duck. Oh yeah, I was I was at somebody's house helping them in the backyard, and I said, "Hold on, give me an hour." And I went to my computer that I had set up on a 800 by 600 monitor, uh, and I, I, you know, just there's put no it together pixels in that monitor. Lots of people have sent me finished models of Gizmo. They just went ahead and, and modeled it. Yours looked pretty good. But the problem was that it wasn't like at all what I was going for. So I was like, I just casually mentioned, I was like, I mean, that's not really what I was going for. I was going for more of like a militarized hit piece. But then like literally the next day, you sent me a refined version of what you had done. Oh, no, that I, was almost exactly what I was looking for. I sent that to you like a half an hour later. Was it half an hour? Yeah. You would send me an email. I would get it on my phone. I'd go to my computer. I'd work. 
I'd send it to you either half an hour or an hour later. And then I'd wait a whole day for your response. I was really busy. <laughs> so yeah, just kind of walk me through the rig and just go ahead and like move things around. What an animated rig is, is a controller that allows you to move the 3D model and all the connections. For instance, you can move that top piece and the springs and all of that will move accordingly. It's not just gonna break and pull apart. This is all really cool and well set up. The problem is that I don't know how to use Maya and we're, eventually we'll figure out how we will go about rendering these. So Peter. I, I've been studying your techniques. Are you gonna be in on the game of life? I am. I don't understand it. <laughs> He's in. Okay. What are the stakes? 10 push-ups, if you say the word. Okay. Which word? This is session. Session time. Word can be said now. Yep, okay. the word can be said now. Alright. The word is mine. M-I-N-E. Okay. Which can be like landmine. Minecraft. If you say the word mm -hmm. and someone got you to say it, rather than saying of your own intent, mm -hmm. you have to do ten push-ups okay. there and then. Mm -hmm. This can happen from now to the day you die. And the degree to which they got you to say it mm -hmm. is a little vague. If I am on top of it, and we're in a conversation, you said it of your own court, and I catch you, got you, your defense against that is pretty weak. The entire conversation, and finally got you to say it. Who's to say I wasn't paying attention? Hey, Jake. Peter's in. Peter's in. You're in the game? Yeah, so he doesn't know what he just got himself into, so... <laughs> Since all of the animations were done inside of Maya and I really wanted to render this stuff on this computer with Octane, we managed to figure out a really good system just to save it as a 3ds Max file. Now I can actually do all the rendering on this Puget computer with four 1080 video cards in it. We were able to do this in record-breaking time thanks to our team of very talented artists and clones and a very monster PC. Thanks to Puget for making that PC for us. I don't have to say that about them, I just love Puget and they made an awesome computer, so. So that's the basic compositing workflow. I definitely oversimplified it. Maybe you don't know how to do visual effects and you have no idea what I'm gonna be talking about, so I wanna kinda show something a little bit more approachable. If you wanna learn more about the technical aspects of this, we can actually talk about this one-on-one -on -one if you support us on Patreon. You know, just in case you're curious. Leave a comment in this one, let me know what you thought. Actually, if you haven't seen it yet, what are you doing? Go watch that Gizmo Duck video. <laughs> Evil doers, or I will deal justice.